So that method there will allocate space to the picker array and initialize it with these objects. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to tell the picker array that we want to use a delicate and we also have a data source for it. So self dot sorry we got the wrong one here. We want the picker itself, which is my picker, self dot my picker dot data source equals self and then self dot my picker dot delegate equals self okay now what that means is that when our uh, picker is created it's going to be looking for a data source within this view controller and it's also going to be looking for some methods to act as delegate methods within this view controller. Okay, so that's all we need to do for now. So the first thing that we need to do is um, we need to write two methods that will tell the picker um, how many components we want, so how many spinning wheels. In this case we just want one and how many rows and we want a row for each of our objects so we we're going to need one two three four five rows okay so find some space here and we're going to type ns integer number and as you type number you should get the code completion number of components in picker view okay and space and then open curly brackets and return so we're going to tell the picker view how many components in the picker view that we want and we simply want one component so we type return and it's the return type is an integer so a whole number so we're just going to type return one and then our semicolon. Okay. And the second method we're going to implement. Again, it's an ns integer. And this time we type, if you start typing picker view, and then this method is called number of rows in component. So select that one. Now we could just type return 5, okay, and that would be fine. But if this was actually an NS mutable array, okay, and therefore we could add objects to it and take objects away, if we did that, if we added another object, another Star Wars character, this would be broken. Okay, so we don't want to do that because we, as this changes, or if that changed, we, we don't want to have to rewrite this code again. Okay, So we can just make reference to the number of objects in the picker array. So all we have to do is say self.pickerArray.count, semicolon. So that's a property of, of NSArray, is this method called the count. So it will, it will find, count the number of objects in our picker array and return that as a whole number. All right. So if we run that, hopefully we will see our picker. OK, so we've got our picker. And we've got one, two, three, four, five rows. Okay. Now there are question marks here because we haven't told the picker the text that we want on each of these rows. 
but at least we've got a working picker with the right number of rows and the right number of components, which is one. So now to um, to pass the actual string objects to the picker, we need to implement a method called title for row. So type a minus sign space and then ns string space star and then the object is picker view title for row for component. So as you start typing picker, it will code complete. So hit enter, space, open curly brackets, return. So all we need to do is uh, all we need to do is reference these objects okay and we're actually going to use a method of NS array that we saw in previous weeks so we're going to say return and in the where it says expression we're going to say self dot picker array because we want to make reference to our array space object at index Okay, and this is an integer. Okay, so it's expecting a number here, but in order for it to be dynamic, okay, we can pass it. I'll just open that up. One of the arguments for this is called row, which is actually an integer. So we so rather than putting a static number here, we can simply make reference to row close off our method so what this method will do it will look at uh, the very first row which is indexed 0 and in the uh, default case here that's called mountain view but in our case it's Darth Vader so this is index 0 so row will be 0 Okay, so in here, the first time this runs through, row will be replaced with zero. So it will go to the picker array, the, get the object at index zero, which is Darth Vader, and put that here. It then runs this method again on row, uh, the second row, which is actually index number one. And so row then becomes the number one, and it will find this object here, which is Luke Skywalker. Okay, so again, like we've done here, this by by typing this, this becomes dynamic. Okay, if we change our array, we don't have to change this line of code. Okay, so let's run that. And now, rather than question marks, we have our object titles. So we've got five titles, and they're in order. Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan, C-3PO, and R2-D2. Okay, so we've got our picker. But of course, as I'm selecting these rows, our label isn't changing. So the final method that we're going to implement is actually called did select row. So we type minus space void and type as you type picker, it will uh, find that method. And as you can say, it's as you can see, it's the did did select row method. So hit the return button and uh, space open curly brackets return again. So this method will be called every time we make a selection. So we want to put that selection into our label. So we need to make reference to our label. Self.PickerLabel.Text, as we always do, equals. And like we've done up here, we don't want to have to type equals at 
Darth Vader or at Luke Skywalker. Okay, what we want to do is depending on the row number, we want to select the right string object. Okay, so we simply need to make reference to our picker array again and use the object at index method. So as before, self dot picker array space object at index row. Okay, exactly as we did before. And then run that. And now as we select each one, the label changes. And what you might have noticed, and I'll do it again, is when we run this, the first time it loads, Darth Vader is not selected. Okay? Because this method is only called after you've selected the row. Right? So I select OB1 and it changes to OB1. So what we want to happen is we want Darth Vader to be here on the first uh, upon uh, actually loading the application and of course there's two ways that we could do that we could simply type Darth Vader into here which would be <clears throat> be the simple option to do but we can also do that in code and the view did load method is the place to do it All right and we simply need to replicate exactly what we've got here. So upon loading the application, loading the view, we want the text of the picker label to equal um, self.pickerArray object at index. There's going to be one slight difference. So if we copy that, paste it in there, we'll get an error because this method doesn't know what row is. Okay. But of course, we know that on launching this application, the first row is always the one that's selected. Okay. So if we change this to zero, then that will equal Darth Vader. So now if we run the application, now we've got Darth Vader, and that's the first one that's selected. So we can select any one that we want now, and the text will change. Okay, and that's all I'm going to go through with you this week. Uh, so that's gesture recognizers, really, really cool way of transitioning between uh, views in your application, or changing text, or doing anything you want using the inbuilt functionality of the gesture recognizers. And secondly, we looked at the uh, default picker view, which again is a really cool way of displaying lists um, and allowing people to select options from a list. Okay, so I'll see you next week.